Okay, so uh, today I'm going to uh, go over and talk to you about the mechanics of a bike. And I want to tell you about how to, what to look for properly when you buy a bike. So the first thing you need to look for is a good bike. And uh, if you're in Vietnam or anywhere in Asia, your normal bike price, <laughs> depending on the season, you can find a bike anywhere in good shape from $75 to $500. So just depending on what, you know, a brand new bike can cost you about 500, but you can find a, a bike for $75 running condition where people can't sell it and they're in a hurry to go to the airport or they have a meeting or something like that. So. Uh, just look around many Facebook pages, all the groups. Uh, you can go to all the hostels, asking people, many, many things. So, uh, uh, in Vietnam is quite the easiest way. Thailand is very hard because you have to have insurance, driver's license, a whole nine yards. Uh, Cambodia, bikes are there, but they're kind of hard to find and same as Laos. So let's go over uh, a bike and what to look for. So I'm going to show you just on this uh, uh, semi-automatic scooter here. Okay, so we come over here and uh, the first thing we do is we put up the stand. Okay, in order to do this, you just put your foot down like this and then push on it hard and then it's going to lift the bike up. Okay, so once you got the bike lifted up, we want to check. Okay, you have your tires, you have your chain, you have your gearbox, you have your brakes. Okay. So I'm going to go over today and explain to you, okay? Uh, the first thing that you need to do is, uh, you know, make sure it looks good. You know, because anyone that takes care of the bike, you know, washes it or, you know, uh, most people that want their bike to look good, take care of the engine also. So this is a good uh, start. Uh, your next start would be to... Um, make sure that your tires are good because tires are very important so when you check your tires you want to uh, put it on the stand and then you move your arm uh, horizontal okay and see if it's firm and stiff it is if it is then it's fine you're okay and then your next thing is you can move the thing move the tire make sure it's good nice and spinning good because what happens is, is you have a gear inside of here if your tire is wobbly or something, that means your back tire is bad. Same goes for your front. Uh, next thing is uh, your chain. When you check your chain, make sure that there's no rust. Uh, you know, this chain is pretty much brand new. Um, and then what you want to have is you want to have a one to a two finger lift up in the center of your chain. So if I go like this, I have like a finger and a half. Okay, that's pretty good. Here is your back bolt. When you push this, when you push, tighten this bolt up, this pushes closer this way and pushes your chain further back that way. So what, what happens is, if this bolt here is all the way to the end here, that means you have no more slack for the chain to tighten up. That means basically the next time you're gonna tighten up your chain, you're gonna have to buy a new chain. Or they can cut the link and uh, they can do it that way, but uh, I would recommend just buying a new chain. You don't want your chain falling off and flying somewhere and cutting your leg open or something like that. Um, when you check your tires, make sure there's no drywall. You'll see like uh, dry rotting. If there's dry rotting, you'll see like a bunch of cracks on the side. That means that you pretty much need a new tire. Make sure your tire has tread. Okay, this one has some pretty good trade, tread still. Okay, now we're going to move on to uh, the gear shifter over here. So, depending on what bike you have, you know, of course, this is uh, semi-automatic, so it's got the cheat sheet uh, gear shifter. So, basically, you know, it, it's all down. You know, as to a manual, will be like one down and three up or one down, four up. Okay, but even if I push up, because on your manual, you'll put your foot under. So if I push up, that means this goes down, okay? So it's just a cheat bar. But make sure it's nice and firm and uh, no like slacking in it. You know, push the gears down, make sure that they go through nice and smooth. Um, 
and then uh, this is pretty much you want to check everything like this from your uh, swing bars okay down here uh, your cross arm bars swing bars make sure that there's no cracks in it or nothing you can look up under the engine you know this is your engine here make sure that there's nothing no beat upness you know no one was driving over railroad crossings or doing crazy shit um, Okay, and then this is your front tire. Do the same thing. Check it. Um, uh, you know, make sure you, you can lift the bike up a little. You know, check. See, nice and firm. Okay, these are your shocks. Okay, let's test out the shocks. If I push down the bike like this, you see the bike, the, the shocks come back up. These are your shocks. Okay, push the bike down, up. Okay, the shocks still have good pressure. Um, same goes for your back shocks here. If I push the back shocks down, they come up. They don't get stuck or anything like this. And you can, you will be able to, turn the phone sideways. You'll be able to tell if the, if the, if the shocks are bad. I mean, you'll feel like the bike is not firm or stiff or anything like this. Um, so, when you have a manual, you're gonna have a clutch on this side, okay? So you're gonna push in the clutch. Make sure it's nice and firm. Uh, I'm not gonna go on this video of how to drive a manual uh, or a clutch. You can watch other YouTube videos. Maybe in the future I will, but I don't have a, a clutch bike with me to tell you. So this is just semi-automatic where you don't need the clutch. You just push down the gear and it changes the gear for you, okay? Make sure all your stuff works, your lights, your horns, your blinkers. Uh, this is your, uh, when you first start up your bike, so you want to uh, rev up your bike more, uh, lower your bike more, you know, this is basically to uh, get your bike warmed up. Uh, not all bikes have this. Uh, uh, again, if you're buying bikes in Vietnam, most of your uh, tachometers and gauges and fuel <laughs> probably aren't going to work, so. Don't even worry about <laughs> this stuff. Just worry that your lights are working. Uh, make sure your blinkers are working, your horn, you know, your horn's pretty important. Uh, turn, turn your bike on and off. You know, make sure your high beam's working. Um, so let's go ahead and I will turn the bike on for you. And then, okay, you, you can hear it. It sounds good. Sounds really good, and uh, you can hear if the bike just done if it's missing or sputtering or sounding like an old gret, dead grandpa or an old nagging woman. Then you know like there's something wrong with the bike. <laughs> so just uh, make sure it sounds good. Um, <clears throat> the next thing that's really important is uh, over here on this side is your oil. Okay, this is your oil here. So lefty loosey, lefty to turn it off, righty tidy, okay? And you always wanna make sure you put it on the stand because that's what it's designed to do, okay? When you check the oil, you want to wipe it off, okay? Because that's not a good reading at first. Make sure there's no cotton or anything like that, you know, on your stick. Put it back down and tighten it back up. Righty tidy. Lefty Lucy, okay? And then you check the oil. By checking the oil, okay, you're gonna see. See the black here? It's kind of a little off because the oil is supposed to be up here. You don't check the oil on this side, you always check it on the smooth side because this side can always catch oil from dripping or there could have oil, been oil up here already when you put the stick in this side will always be clean and smooth so you always check the back side and look to the rough side to see where the oil's at okay uh so see you don't want this in your oil this bike is low on oil uh these bikes typically only uh have about one quarter oil so maybe it's like needs about a half a quart more uh the oil look pretty good uh, you can see here the oil isn't truly black uh, so it looks like it's in okay shape you know of course this looks like a brand new bike <clears throat> but if the oil is like super black 
maybe the people just don't care haven't changed the oil in 2,000 kilometers they recommend you change your oil every 500 kilometers I think that's a little extreme I think that you can easily get away with a thousand but I always use the synthetic oil I think it's better plus synthetic oil is recyclable or it's recycled so I think it's better for the environment also yeah it costs a little bit more but you can ride twice as much miles so or kilometers you can ride 1500 and it doesn't cost that much and then you don't have to worry about stopping every 500 kilometers to change your oil you know you can just keep driving and driving but oil is very important if you don't know how an engine works i highly recommend you go on youtube to find out uh, your next very important thing that you should know is your spark plug your spark plug is down here you see this black okay and when i pull it off when you pull it off you want to make sure you pull it straight off okay you don't want to go on an angle or anything like this okay and then when you look at the spark plug you might see it from here okay you see it's pretty white and uh okay and then if you look inside you'll see like maybe like uh okay it looks very clean okay but you it's very hard to see on my camera but if you look inside you'll see a hexagon nut uh in this hexagon nut make sure there's no rust to it if there's any rust get a new one it only costs a dollar or two and uh highly recommend you replace your spark plug about every uh, thousand kilometers to uh keep your bike uh up to par basically your engine needs oil and a spark plug like we need water for our human body so uh er any mechanic can pretty much do this to any bike um the rest of your stuff is like carburetors that are here i mean this is all getting very technical um but i think as far as what uh what i just showed you is a good learning strategy to keep you going or to get you going on a bike and make sure that the bike at least finishes your journey for you on your backpacking and at least you're safe and you're not stuck in the middle of you know in the mountain somewhere and uh you're not broke down or anything like this and these are all very vital points that i mentioned and uh, they should be overlooked many many times in your journey so keep safe and uh keep looking at my youtube and i'll make more and uh cheers